Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, instead of doing the news, uh, we know what's going on in the news. The news is nothing but fantastic. Uh, the uh, market is up uh, dramatically. Uh, I think we're around 39,000, 40,000, something like that for a Bitcoin. Alts are up. Looks like there might be a new alt season coming up. And that was why I did that video yesterday, which I talked about uh, the all my different holds in my portfolio, where I thought everything was going, it was a big price prediction, which everybody seems to love, uh, except when I do it. <laughs> because when I do it, I, I give the, I give very conservative numbers. And uh, I know people want me to to really push things to the moon and, and tell me that, or tell them that, uh, you know, Bitcoin's gonna be a million dollars tomorrow, but I just, I just can't do it. I, just, I think it's so stupid to, to, to predict. I used to, I, I did a video in my very early YouTube days, you can watch it, it's like one of my first ones I did where I predicted XRP to like some enormous number and uh, obviously it didn't come true. So these days, uh, and, and it just makes sense to me just to do conservative things, but, it's not what I'm here for today. Today, I'm here for another reason. What I wanna to talk to you about is, is because I think that we are on the precipice of what is about to happen as far as the crypto market to really uh, explode. And what that means is that if you're here right now and you're watching, there's a pretty good chance that this might not be your first day of investing. It's a pretty good chance you've been investing for quite some time. Maybe like me, been dollar cost averaging over the last three to four years. Or maybe you just got in in the last you know six months. But, but wherever you're at, uh, there's a pretty good chance that right now we're at the beginning of what could be an enormous bull run. Um, I never got to experience the uh, excitement from 2016 when everybody went through that halving into 2017 when everything went like this big hockey stick, like it was right here then whoosh, to the moon. I never got that because I was I started right here and then it went here and it went, <laughs> it went down like that. So I never got to experience 2016 into, tw into the early days of 2017, but now I think we are. I think we've gone through 2020, which was, let's be honest, the crappiest year we could possibly go through. Uh, and then now we're into 2021. I think things are gonna be um, fireworks. That's the best I can say it. So. I think this is hopefully this YouTube video age as well, but I want to talk to you about before you make your crypto millions. And what I did was I had a blog post and I wrote this about six or seven months ago. Actually, Digital Dave over at Crazy for Cryptos, he asked me to do like a, like a guest blog post. And I said, sure. And I wrote it for his, for his section, for his Patreon. And then I later, much later, I put it into uh, my website, which is danteacherscrypto.com, 100% free, just sign up, it's uh, free, why not? So it's got all, all the, all my information that I have for like, you know, the basics, uh, what to do your own research, uh, investment uh, advice tips, which I just say what I do, I can't give you any advice, I'm not a financial planner, obviously. But uh, one of these things that I wrote about was before you make your crypto millions. And I know right now, a lot of you probably aren't thinking, I mean, some of you are thinking like, hey, I'm a millionaire, what do I do? But some of you haven't really even thought about that yet. Like what happens when you don't have to show up to work? What happens when money isn't really an issue? Uh, what happens when you get to drop that second or third job and you can be at home with your kids all day long? Well, I will just tell you this. Um, I went through all of that stuff when, uh, and, and I talk about this in, in the blog post. Um, First, I start off with, I, I, I talk about Digital Dave's advice, which is the first thing you want to do is don't go out and blow it on a bunch of stupid stuff. Uh, he says, uh, and he's got a really good point. He goes, look, just give it like six months or so and then uh, you know pay for all your bills and everything else, but don't go out and buy like the most uh, crazy nice Lambo and uh, the mansion because that, that's the kind of stuff that, that people do who win the lottery. When they win the lottery, uh, guess what happens in a couple of years? They're dead broke and, and or they're dead or they have some kind of craziness with their family who are suing them for all these different types of things. So, so don't do that. So uh, Dave got some pretty sound advice, which is, look, just pay off your bills and then sit on for six months and then kind of hide out. And then me, I kind of take it like, like a little bit of a, of, of a step further. And, and I started to talk about what it would be like when you actually make enough money to where you don't have to work. Because you, right now, I will tell you this, and I talk about this in the blog post. It's the same thing that happened to my friends uh, right now for coronavirus. They thought it'd be so fantastic. Like, oh, Rob, you got the best life. You just get to sit at home and, you know, work from home and do what you want, whatever you want. I'm like, it sucks. It, it's not that great. You don't understand. And they're like, yeah, yeah, sure. So then when Corona came around and they got furloughed, 
uh, at the first couple of weeks, like, this is awesome. You're a filthy liar. And I'm like, okay, just wait. And of course they waited. And then, you know, a couple of weeks later, they call me up or they text me like, man, it sucks. There's like not much to do, you know, because I already get my, my, my work done or they're completely furloughed. So they don't really know what to do. So really it comes down to this. To pay off your bills, but you got to really start to think about right now, like, what am I going to do? And there's a good quote uh, from Benjamin Franklin. And he says, uh, money never made a man happy, nor will it ever. The more a man has, the more he wants. Instead of filling a vacuum, it creates one. So just remember that, that no, no amount of money will ever give you happiness. And it really comes down to what you want to do with that. Now, on this channel, we talk about, you know, things, you know, that I invest in, and I don't give any advice, but, uh, you know, there's different things that I, I talk about and what to do, you know, crypto loans, and we talked about that, and Amazon, and all those different things. So, but the real question then becomes, what do I do when I have all this money? So, I will just tell you this. There was this great book that I read called Delivering Happiness, and it was by Tony Shea, and he's the founder of Zappos. Unfortunately, Tony recently uh, passed away in a, uh, a crazy fire. Uh, very difficult to get all the right information, but the message that he had was pretty unique. Uh, I read this book and he talks about, look, he goes, when you make a bunch of money, there's really three levels that, that you have. Uh, the first one is the rock star level, right? Rock star level is like when you can just, you know, you have a bunch of money, you can just do whatever you want to and get all your different needs and desires filled and it's pretty great, right? And then you, you realize that there's only so much time you can do that before you really get burnt out. Then you, have a, you, you find some kind of passion that you, uh, will lead you into the right way. And that is what uh, Tony did. He started to do a lot of traveling, a lot of uh, phil uh, some charity work, philanthropy, philanthropy. Yeah, I can never say that word right. And then, of course, the last one is, is, is a higher purpose and, and meaning. And really, uh, you can take a look at that. Um, but even Alex Mashinsky had an even better saying, which, which went like this, uh, someone to love, something to do, someone to look forward to. So it's, it's, it's like the perfect phrase, right? You have someone in your life that, that you, you know, you love, you have your, your wife, your spouse, your kids and everything else. Great. And you're set. Uh, you have uh, something to do, uh, like this job or like a little bit of a, a side hustle that you have or a YouTube channel, something like that. And then you have something to look forward to, uh, something that, you know, really drives you or, uh, just something that, you know, you, you look forward to like a, a going to some place or being with someone or whatever else it is. So these are the types of things you really want to think about uh, now, because if, if you don't, then you start to just get stuck in this pleasure rock star moment. And that is where like when everybody who comes into a lot of money, whether that be uh, through cryptocurrency, whether that be uh, through the lottery, whether that be through a professional athlete, and you hear about these professional athletes all the time. NFL stands for not for long. And then before you know it, they have no money and there's nothing really to do. So the first thing you want to do, of course, take care of yourself. But the second thing is, what is my bigger purpose? Because I can't just sit around on a big lump of money and do absolutely nothing. And uh, I went through this when I stopped work. I actually had uh, separated from my wife and I was living in Las Vegas. Not a bad place to be when you start up your own online business and now you don't have to work and you have a ton of money. So what do you do? Anything you want to do. And like we talk about, it's pretty awesome at first, but it gets real old real fast. And then before you know it, you have to really find uh, some kind of a passion. Now, things worked out pretty well for me, but I just encourage you to read this blog post because it's all my mistakes and all my screw ups and all the things that I wish someone would have told me uh, when I, you know, came into a bunch of money. And I think that is what is about to happen uh, with you potentially. Uh, who knows? I, I can only tell you what, where I think we're going. I think 2021 is going to be a pretty great year. And that is, a, that is really the big thing that I wanted to get across right now. Make sure you set yourself up uh, for later because if you wait till you come into money, then all of a sudden you're like, shh. What happened? What do I do now? All right, so that is, that is the uh, very first part. I, that's a kind of a lofty question. Really what I should have done was actually start with this one because we had talked about uh, yesterday, we had the, um, uh, let's see, my predictions. And one of the big ones that I talked about was Voyager. And I talked about how Voyager, uh, the, the, the token and the exchange, where it was likely to go. I'm not telling you what to invest in. I'm just telling you exactly what I'm going to do. And there was one piece that I actually left out on Voyager token. And, I, and right now, it's, it, when I made the video, which was yesterday, it was at 29 cents. And today, it's at 45 cents. And I think, and actually, I think it's going to go much, much higher. I have a, a prediction of, and this is, I do conservative 
numbers, I, I swear, uh, like I gave you a Bitcoin prediction of 150,000, Ethereum between five and 10,000. I don't think those are way crazy numbers, but there was one, the Voyager, I talk about exactly why this is. It was at 29 cents. I think it's going to $30. So that seems outlandish, doesn't it, right? But if you take a look at it, first of all, the circulating supply and max supply, 222 million. It's not that much. And then if you take a look at the history, uh, what happened here? Not as for this. Let's go to the max level. So the history, the Voyager token used to be up in the $12 range. Now it's at 29 cents. And when I give you the reasons, you know, behind the CEO and what's going on, I can definitely see this. So with this type of token, this could be, you know, one, one of the big ones that could drive you to that, that next level. So I don't know what your holds are. I don't know what, uh, what you have. But again, I think uh, with 2021, as long as we don't do something goofy, like sell a little bit too uh, early, then uh, I think things should work out. Now, the next level I want to talk about or things to actually be aware of is taxes. And I know people are like, oh, taxes, this guy and his taxes. It's just something that you, you have to be aware of. And this was an article that we talked about that uh, the IRS is transitioning from education to enforcement. And uh, in the beginning, they were kind of lightly hands off. And they had the, you know, just the, the, the 1040 question, which was, have you purchased any virtual currency of this year? And then if you said, you know, no, and you may know you did because, uh, you know, uh, KYC and AML, they would write you a nice little letter and say, hey, Pete, uh, guess what? Uh, I know you put no, but I think you meant to say yes. So let's, uh, let's, let's rectify that. Well, now they're like, you know what? Uh, we're not going to do that anymore. And now it's going to be penalties and fines and jail times. And that is what this article talks about. So that is a bummer. And then there was a new article that just came out from CryptoTrader.tax. And that 1040 form uh, where it used to be buried is now uh, in the front of the tax forms for for United States citizens. And and again, if, 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 if you're not a United States citizen, just, just hold on. I'm going to talk to you if you're in South Korea and potentially in Europe in a second. So with that one, now they have changed some things and they put it front and center. And also to make sure that you know exactly what it is, they have like a little section which uh, really gives a definition, a very clear definition of what they consider a virtual currency and hint, hint, it really is cryptocurrency. So uh, they are really gonna go after it this, this year and I just want to make sure that you are prepared. Which leads me to my last point, which is this. Oops, not that one this one. So first of all, I want to, uh, I don't do many promotions on this channel. I usually just do affiliate links and that is it. But I want to say thank you to CryptoTrader.tax. They are promoting uh, this video and uh, they, this is only for you to, United States citizens. So I say this is the last. If you are looking for a pretty good program, not a pretty good, a great program. I've been using this. This will be my second year. I used this last year. It saved me $16,000 in tax loss harvesting. It was super simple. They have an API integration into all the big uh, exchanges and even the small exchanges. You, just, you set it up between the learning curve, which is me learning what the heck of what I was doing to actually printing out the file uh, of the form to my uh, CPA. It was 30 minutes. That was amazing. So I just did it, click, 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 and then off it went. Uh, the accountant came back to me and says, hey, congratulations. You saved $16,000 in all these different crappy trades that you did in the beginning. <laughs> Yeah, that was me. So if you, uh, well, two things. First of all, there's a link uh, in the description where you can sign up for CryptoTrader.tax. Also, uh, right next to that link is this website um, where you can enter to win a free unlimited tax report. And they're giving away one free every single week. So all you gotta do is just put in your first name and email and just click on there and they'll, uh, they'll draw it. Now, if you don't win, because hey, you know, there's only one, just remember you get a, a pretty good discount just for uh, Dan viewers. And lastly, let me say this. It's not just the United States citizens. Just so you know, uh, the South Korean government is gonna start taxing crypto in 2022. So I think this is gonna be more of a thing, especially as we just saw a massive amount of money printing. Uh, so where are they going to squeeze people? Well, probably taxes. Do I think that all taxes are gonna you know, uh, eliminate this debt? No, but it's a great place to start for the governments and they sure will wanna do that. So just real quick, uh, just so you know, this is what's, because South Korea was one of those places where they were like hands off and everything else. And then all of a sudden like, eh, you know what, maybe we should do this. So uh, legislative notice details that the amendment will be enacted in February and profits from buying and selling cryptos in South Korea will be taxed at 
However, the rules of, is applicable to only to crypto holders with annual income of over 2.5 million won. I was like, whoa, that's, that's pretty good, 2.5 million won. You know how much 2.5 million won is in uh, US dollars? Uh, 2,300 bucks. So everything over 2,300 bucks, 20% tax, and that is it. New rule will apply in 2022. Transactions of listed shares will also be part of the 20% tax for profits of over 50 million won annually. And that's like, I don't know, like 32,000 bucks, bucks or something like that. So if it's happening in South Korea, which was like one of the, the, the most lax countries uh, for taxing, uh, just get ready for wherever you are at to get uh, the living uh, tar taxed out of you. And that's really how it is. So if uh, crypto trader that tax was in other countries, I'd recommend that to you, but uh, they're only for the United States. And uh, that is uh, the big thing. Lastly, I would just want to say this. That's not it. That's not it either. Where'd it go? There it is. <laughs> so we just hit 90,000 subscribers. So I want to say thanks to everybody who uh, has signed up and been a subscriber. And anybody who has actually um, come through and, and watched the channel. I really appreciate it. When we started this channel, I didn't think it was just... The thing we just talked about as far as what to do when you, you, know, you make all the money, you don't have to really work too much. This was kind of like me, like my business is kind of run on autopilot. And some people say, well, that'd be fantastic. Well, it is if you're working three jobs and you got 20 kids howling at you. Yeah, of course. But there's the opposite side of the, spe side of the spectrum where you want to just think to yourself, well, what can I do to really help people to uh, get a message out? And I think this was the best way because um, financial freedom it's not so much about happiness, but it's it's like giving you freedom to do whatever the hell you want, when you want, with 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 whomever you want to, as long as they're <laughs> as long as they're with you and on on that wavelength. So it's not just about happiness; it's just about putting you into a better mindset to where you can live your really. I know it's cliche, your best life. So that is it. So uh, thanks everybody who has signed up. I really appreciate it. And that is it for today. So thanks for listening. I know it's a little bit long, but I think in the long run, hopefully this video ages well, um, it will be um, a little bit of a better thing going forward to tomorrow. And it'll help you not make the same screwy mistakes that I made. I will link that uh, blog post in the description. And that is it. So thanks so much. And I'll see you on the next one.